Ms. Vanessa Richards, and I will be your MC for this evening's proceeding. Right. Good work. Oh. Thank you. Uh, we gather here on this beautiful and unceded territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam people, the nation, in solidarity, for justice, and with love. Black History Month is an opportunity to recognize our challenges, our accomplishments, and to steal ourselves for the path that we're on, the ones we've inherited and the ones that we're forging in need. On this day, February 1st, 1960, four black college students began a sit-in protest at a lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina, which many of you will know was a major moment, turning moment in the African American Civil Rights Movement. There's one thing I know, that if we want to see change, positive social change, we can turn to our young people. It's our young people that we're acknowledging today. And so, <laughs> I've had the great uh, privilege and pleasure of working with many young people. And it is always, always a uh, enlivening those days when you feel like oh man the world's not really working very well if you work with a set of young people i promise you you'll start to feel hopeful again and i think after today's uh, presentation you'll you'll feel imbibed which is a word i've just invented yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we begin that I, I actually would like to acknowledge some of the despair and some of the exhaustion and the fear that might be in the room that we might be carrying. Our flag is at half mass, and I'd like to raise my hands in respect and honor of the lives that we've lost. And in this political moment, we're at the very beginning of what will be a very long road. And one thing we know about positive social change, positive social change, is that we will have to keep keeping on and we will have to take care of ourselves in the process. And to take care of ourselves is an act of radical love. And there's many ways that we can do this. Today I'm gonna to offer one sonic tonic. It's something that all of our ancestors, African and otherwise, have always used to keep our spirits afloat and to build connectivity between peoples. And it's something that you cannot do alone Harmony. You have to do it with others. But before we get to that song, I want to just uh, let's breathe. So maybe just put your feet on the ground. You got your legs crossed or one foot on the other. Make yourself comfortable in your chair. Throw your shoulders back. Your sun, the sun that's right inside of here, like your. Uh, Lighthouse. <laughs> so let's hear the sound of the ocean. We're going to do this three times and then we'll get going. So one big breath in. And the sound of the ocean. water protectors in the house. We've got a song for you. This is a song from the Canadian singer-songwriter Coco Love Alcorn. It's a community choir hit at the moment. Makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> those of you that are not in a community choir yet, um, you'll know that there's songs that, uh, that move through communities that people find really stirring when we've gathered together to sing. And this is one that a lot of folks are singing across Canada right now. And the words are metaphoric, if you choose, or they can be literal. As we, and as our elected representatives and the citizens of Vancouver take a stand to protect our coastal waters, as we have an intersectional moment here, 
Um, this is our song. First the words, then the melody, then we sing. <laughs> water heal my body, water heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water I feel whole. First me, then you. Water heal my body, water heal my soul. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water. When I go down, down to the water. By the water, I feel whole. By the water, I feel whole. And it sounds like this. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel whole. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel whole. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. Subjects that have been featured in that documentary is true. 
to Wilson. And I think it's from a selfish perspective that I was so excited about introducing the show because I'd walk past the room where the film is currently being edited and I'd just see this person who has such charisma on the screen. But this is somebody that I'd like to meet. I've never met her, but I'm pleased to introduce you to Chu Wilson. Let's give a really warm welcome. <laughs> Who fought for the rights for my parents to be together, 
and for me to live openly as a transgender girl. Let's make sure that all that planning doesn't go to waste. Thank you. Mm -hmm. who's been on some of the productions at the Arts Club stage that I've seen, and so I'm happy to see your daughter has inherited some of your performance. <laughs> Beautiful. So, Chelsea D. E. Johnson will be giving us some music right now. And uh, you should know, Chelsea is a soul sister fueled by rock and roll. She's an integral voice for female empowerment. She's bursting from the depths of East Van. She's been dubbed the voice by the late great Zacchaeus Jackson. Chelsea brings healing lyrical content and raw vocal power to every performance, including the one you're going to see today. And uh, just while we're talking about firsts, you know, we're used to a lot of uh, women who sing. I love women who sing myself. Um, but when we play instruments, it's not so typical. We often start off playing instruments in school, in lessons, and then as we age, we stop playing. And I really admire women that are instrumentalists, and it's still an unusual thing in 2016 to see a woman playing an instrument. Rock and roll works in this way quite nicely on occasion. Thank you, Chelsea. And. Uh, so what you should know is that uh, she's just done some really good tours with C.R. Avery, and she's recently placed seven on the CBC's 11 Best New Bands of 2016 with her project Old Soul Rebel. And uh, Chelsea. Woo! Thank you all for being here. I think there's a reach me here. 
So this is a highlight of our year here at City Hall. I just want to say it's the seventh year in a row we've done this. Right. Kicked off Black History Month here. Well, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge we are on the unceded homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil mm -hmm. Actually, Musqueam, tsleil Squamish. On this wall here, we were honored by the artists and, and their nations. Uh, last year, this, this art was uh, unveiled to symbolize the importance of the three host First Nations here in the place where the people of Vancouver uh, make their decisions. And uh, our partnership is stronger than ever. So I want to acknowledge uh, their uh, and stewardship of the lands and waters that we get to live here on, and uh, be thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, Black History Month this year is also part of Canada's 150th anniversary, which in Vancouver we are 150 plus. In partnership with our three First Nations locally here, uh, the plus is very important because they've been here in Vancouver a hell of a lot longer than the rest of us. <laughs> so there's going to be amazing celebrations throughout the year at highlighting Aboriginal culture, the, the history of this land, uh, and the nations that are here. Lots of, lots of amazing stuff, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't tuned in, the city's website, I'm sure, has info for our 150-plus celebrations, but they will be uh, rocking the city for the whole year. And this is, I was just thinking, it's, it's almost like uh, Black History Month is sort of like the, the kickoff, it's like smudging council chambers for the year. <laughs> like, cleans, uh, cleans out the old energy and brings in the new vitality. Uh, and, and this year, we need it more than ever. As, uh, and great words, uh, thank you, Vanessa, for opening up and, and acknowledging uh, the tragedies that happened back east and that are happening all over the world. Uh, but that are closer to home than ever before, and that we're all uh, very uh, worried, concerned, and, uh, and rallying to deal with. Uh, so we, we have that energy to, uh, to build up here. I think uh, this is more than anything else, as I say every year, this is about um, really celebrating the contributions of people of African descent, whether from the continent or the diaspora over the, over the generations since then. And uh, it's a real honor for us uh, as the, the folks that work here, uh, the council that I serve with, I, and I love seeing this council arrangement. <laughs> but I love my, my council too. <laughs> I've been elected by the people of Vancouver. You guys hopefully are next. <laughs> Uh, councillors who are here, Councillor Heather Deal, Councillor Elizabeth Ball, Councillor Andrew Carr, Councillor Andrew Randall, Councillor Dixon. And other councillors, they wouldn't be hiding if they were here. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being here, you guys. And, uh, and a big thanks to our city staff who do work really hard to make sure this happens. Kind of tirelessly behind the scenes. Uh, Vancouver City staff are, are extraordinary and super committed to the city. So thanks again. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I'm going to just uh, recognize the community volunteers though uh, for the work that they've done to organize uh, Black History Month kickoff, various events, and I'll just ask you to stand, all of you uh, fantastic volunteers who make this happen year in and year out. So uh, stand and, yeah, we can just, you can freestyle it on the applause. Crystal Adams.
So got a little bit more before we get into the proclamation zone here. Um, thanks to the youth who are here, and thanks to the organizers for making sure this is about youth this year. Really, really appreciate uh, your time and energy, and uh, and we're dedicating this proclamation to y'all. So uh, <laughs> as activists focused on empowerment and engagement, which uh, speaks to the reason I know those of us who are elected and those who serve the city, we're all about uh, activism, engagement, and empowerment, and trying to do it through the, through the democratic structures. But democracy demands, it only work really functions if there is real engagement, if there's activism, if the people are speaking up on a, on a daily basis and plugged into the system and making it work. So, so. I want to thank you for uh, for being willing to challenge uh, tough issues, to uh, to push the envelope wherever possible, make sure that we're keeping up with the times every way that we can. Uh, thanks for your words, True, and I want to thank you, True, for your work. Uh, True was a, was a real star in a Vancouver Police Department video uh, about trans uh, trans issues and how they affect uh, how the police are dealing with this, which has now kind of gone viral in police departments all over the world, which is uh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, big thanks to the youth, and I just want to, one final piece, because it's happening kind of live here, uh, we're talking about it in council uh, on a very regular basis right now, and recognize the history of Hogan's Alley, which I know is important to a lot of people here, and uh, important part of black history in Vancouver here. It's, uh, <laughs> the loss of Hogan's Alley is a historic injustice. We recognize it as that. Uh, when it happened, it led to the displacement and really the erasure of a, of a neighborhood. And the black community's uh, kind of home spot there uh, at Hogan's Alley uh, definitely was a big impact on the community, on the growth of the community, and uh, the vibrancy of the community. And that's something that we're looking at is we're, uh, we're looking at taking down the viaducts, reclaiming that land, uh, that public land. Uh, we have uh, a lot of community support right now broadly to, to do this, uh, which we didn't know, you know, years ago, uh, it, it seemed like a, uh, a more uh, challenging piece to move through the political system, that we would actually take down the, the Georgia and Dunsmore viaducts, uh, despite their very troubled history and being the only piece of the freeway that ever got built into the city. But uh, we have that opportunity now, we felt well supported as council, council's been voting in, in favor of doing this, we're moving that along. And I think it's it's going to be important that our connection and lots of our allies uh, in the black community here are still working closely with us. That so we um, we got a great collaboration. We got a lot of work to do to figure out how what it's going to be and uh, and what what the future of Hogan's Alley uh, is going to look like. But uh, the opportunity is in front of us, and uh, let's keep working at it, collaborating, keeping the channels open. And making sure we uh, we move that process forward together. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of work on that. Thank you. That is my water. Thank you. So I think we're gonna rock and roll into the proclamation zone. So what we're gonna Thank do? Thank you, Chelsea, for the rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gregor, also for the acknowledgement about Hogan's Alley. I do appreciate that and. All you folks back there in the uh, chamber at the back of the room, we see you, we feel you. Thank you for coming and standing, sitting in that space back there. Appreciate you there. And um, I just want to confirm the poll, or if there's anybody, see when Gregor was on the mic, it was getting kind of buzzed out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had too close to the mic? No, I think that the issue was with the mic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we have, I think, 11. We have about 11 recipients today to receive the proclamation, which we will read out the, their names and a little bit of their accomplishments, and then Gregor will read the content of the proclamation. Then we can all applaud wildly and cheer feel really good. We'll have a little bit more music and then we'll have a food from Calabash downstairs. Sister. So if you're used to seeing the food set up in the um, hallway there, what, what is this room outside the chamber hall? 
the whole point. The foyer. <laughs> <laughs> what you want, it's not in the foyer. Like, hmm, I'm gonna give me a food this year. We've set up a bigger, better space for the reception. So, let us begin. Yep, yeah, this is exactly right. All right, so we're starting. Yeah, are you going to wait on that? <laughs> All right, Daniela Barreto. Daniela, and as you come up, uh, when I call your name, please just come up and enjoy the moment here. People watching you with loving eyes. <laughs> and uh, you'll stay up here until all of your peers are here, and then Gregor will read the proclamation and we'll all applaud you wildly. So let me tell you that Daniela immigrated from Zimbabwe in 2003. She lives and works and studies on Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh land. Daniela is concerned with inclusion and intersectionality in anti-racism and social justice, justice work as an organizer with Black Lives Matter Vancouver. She is currently a master's student at UBC in population and public health, quantitatively studying the impacts of systemic and interpersonal violence against women living with HIV in Vancouver. Just make sure all the eyes are like super loving. <laughs> <laughs> so Cicely Bell Blaine. She is a queer, non-binary, black writer, artist, and community organizer who has been a settler on Coast Salish lands for four years. Originally from London, England, they've been working on bringing social justice, accessibility, and inclusivity to spaces mainly at UBC, where they studied European studies and Russian. They now work as a youth worker for Community, BC's Queer Resource Center, and are a co-founder and organizer of Black Lives Matter Vancouver, among other community initiatives, Cicely Valblay. And would you please welcome to the floor, Jean-Pierre Bizimara. grade 12 student at Killarney Secondary School and volunteer with the YWCA. His recognition that stigma and stereotypes often cause youth to judge one another fuels his dedication to opening dialogue as a tool to build community and the way people treat each other. Jean-Pierre. <laughs> Joy Jaffe. another black queer student at UBC. It's quite a bumper crop. <laughs> <laughs> she studies psychology and English literature. Do you guys ever compare Russian literature and English literature in your conversations? <laughs> coming, it'll be coming for sure. Joy was born in Ghana and she immigrated to Vancouver in 2000. She's been a settler on Coast Salish territory since then. Joy is also an organizer and a member of the Black Lives Matter Vancouver Collective. She's actively working to uplift black voices in this city. When she's not studying or organizing, Joy can be found at Gordon Neighborhood House. Thank you for that. Working as a program assistant for Young Ideas, an initiative that aims to foster connections between young, young adults living in the West End. Joy. <laughs> Alpha. Alpha game by Kira Abia. Alpha was born in the country of Uganda and spent part of his life in an orphanage where his mother worked. It was at the orphanage that a Canadian family sponsored him to go to school in Canada at the age of 12. At the age of 17, Alpha went back to Uganda where he started two schools with his mother where they have youth from families that have had a hard start in life. Wanting to give back to the country that has given him opportunities, Alpha started the Help Change My City Alliance where he works with Christine, Michelle, 
to help youth in schools who are in need of personal development, advancement, and preparation for employment. MOSFEP Secondary, where she helped start the Black Afro-Canadian Student Committee, which has helped over 100 students from the Lower Mainland engage in black activism. Ashley recently graduated from Simon Fraser University, where she completed a Bachelor of Arts specializing in International Studies. Psychology. During her undergrad, she volunteered at Access Pro Bono Clinic in Vancouver, helping to provide legal aid to the community. Being involved in community work has encouraged Shani to further her studies to learn about public policy and policy analysis in lower income communities. Mm -hmm. All right. There's quite a team going on here. This world seems to be like it could be in good hands. True, would you come on and join us, please? We heard from you earlier. Uh, as 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 <laughs> Hannah Wildeis. <laughs> Hannah went to Canada at the age of 15 from Ethiopia. She has been part of several community organizations, including the Fresh Voices Initiative with the Vancouver Foundation, the Vancouver School Board's Engaged Immigrant Youth Program, and working with Samara Canada to promote civic engagement. Thank you. Um, some of you, uh, some of our guests here have been working with the Vancouver Foundation Fresh Voices Initiative, like I mentioned, and I don't know if you're all aware, but the Vancouver Foundation, they manage any excess financial resources individuals or organizations have, and you can direct those towards initiatives that are of particular interest to you. So if you happen to be sitting on a wad of cash and don't quite know what to be doing with it, you could talk to the Vancouver Foundation and it would be going towards wonderful programs like some of the work these are, young folks are participating in. Just thought you should know. <laughs> so we have Sina, get a bar, get a bar. from Uganda. She was born and raised in Eritrea. She's passionate about advocating for immigrant and refugee youth. Since her arrival to Canada, she's been keenly involved in a variety of initiatives, both nationally and internationally. She's been working with organizations such as Vancouver Foundation in their Fresh Voices program, working on reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples with Canadian Roots Exchange and the Canadian Council for Refugees. So I really want to raise my hands for you to be like newcomer in our country and taking that on as an important initiative. Uh, so, these are our young people, our wonderful, uh, our wonderful recipients of our proclamation honoring Black History Month and your contribution to the city of Vancouver. And now I invite our Mayor Gregor Robertson to read the proclamation. Okay. Thanks, Vanessa. So, I shall read. And that's what, that's what the all of these uh, fantastic youth have in their hot hands is a copy of this proclamation for future reference because <laughs> it's also got their names on it which is not a common thing but this is not a common time okay Black History Month whereas this, the United Nations General Assembly has named 2010 to 2020 as the decade of African of the African diaspora and the African Union and European Union have identified 2010 to 2020 as the decade of African women. And whereas people of African descent have been part of Canada since 1605 and BC since 1858 and have contributed to the vibrant cultural, economic, political, and social development of the province. 
And whereas we gather in council chamber today to recognize the achievements of those who stood up and refused to accept second class status, and whose living legacy provides an example in leadership and dialogue for our youth today. And whereas we recognize that our city has a long history of bias and discrimination, historically it has manifested itself in such injustices including race riots and the erasure of neighborhoods. And in the face of this, communities have resiliently maintained their histories and stories. And whereas today we celebrate Black History Month by recognizing a group of exceptional community-minded change makers who are working to make schools more inclusive, combat stigma and stereotypes, and empower people to engage in community development and political activism. And whereas I'm pleased to recognize the following people for their innovative work and dedication to giving back to others. Daniela Barreto, Cecily, Bill, uh, Cecily Bell Blaine, Jean-Pierre Bizimana, Joy Jamfi, Kayla Kiza, Alpha B. Kiravira, Ashley Moliere, <coughs> Janine Noel, True Wilson, Hannah Woldais, and Sina Yatbarak. And whereas people in the city of Vancouver celebrate Black History Month by recognizing the many cultural, economic, and political contributions of people of African heritage and new Canadians from the African diaspora. Now therefore I, Gregor Robertson, the mayor of the city of Vancouver, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2017 as Black History Month in the city of Vancouver. So uh, everyone except for Hannah can return to your seats now and again thank you very much for your contribution. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, Hannah is deeply involved with our volunteer work as part of Fresh Voices, but she's also served on the Vancouver School Board's Engaged Immigrant Youth Program, sharing her experiences as a new Canadian with school trustees and government representatives, and it was there that she discovered her deep passion for social justice. And um, She's also one of the 338 daughters of the vote, representing Vancouver East, who will be taking their seat in Parliament for Canada's 150th birthday mark to mark a, center, to mark a century of women's suffrage. And I will like to Chance being welcomed by those 
um, young people, and then that experience has changed my life, and I wanted to give back, and I have been a, a youth ambassador for about three years, support from teachers. Our future might not be as bright as we want it to be, and as bright as it seems. Education helps us thrive and become the best citizens that we can be. There is a provincial election coming up. <laughs> and when everybody go out to vote, I want you to remember me. And I want you to remember every young person in your life. Because your decision is going to affect our future. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here from, on behalf of Canada Post. First of all, I want to thank the City of Vancouver's Council and Gregor, Mayor Gregor Robertson for having us here today. I wanted to talk a little bit about our staff, and it's uh, covered up here, so we're going to do a little unveiling later on. But I just wanted to start with uh, talking a little bit about why I'm here, us down, the person we're recognizing for Black History Month, and uh, do some unveiling so you can see if what I said was actually accurate. <laughs> okay. Of course, I got my speech prepared, so bear with me as I try to read this. Uh, Black History Stamp is one of the early issues that Canada Post releases on the 2017 Stamp Program. Um, other, program other stamps being launched this year it will commemorate Vimy Ridge, the Halifax Explosion, and the 100th anniversary of the NHL. Adorning this year's stamp is a New World in Interpreter who remains a bit of a mystery. You will be intrigued to know who it is. We don't know the full story of Matthew da Costa, but we know that he embodies the way, uh, many of the characteristics that define us as Canadians. About our stamp program. So every stamp that Canada Post launches in regards to Black History Month specifically, and in general, talks a little bit about our Canadian history, the remarkable history that we have and the story that we have to tell. Black Canadians have contributed considerably to that script. They've endured great adversity and accomplished great things, and so we're proud to tell their stories. Let's talk a little bit about Matthew da Costa. Who is he? Historians believe that Matthew da Costa was the first person of African descent to arrive or reach Canada. That is, the first name, first uh, whose name was actually survived within the historical records. So that's mm. how it's coming about, right? Okay, he was a free man and he was a skilled linguist. He earned a living by interpreting for European traders with the indigenous people of the New World. Da Costa was thought to have understood Dutch, English, French, Portuguese, and Ooh, you're close. Pigeon bath. He helped to bridge the gap between different cultures in a time of great change. So, with that, you can tell he would have been successful in today's society because of the changing world that we live in. Especially in a place like Canada, with its many cultures and varied influences. Costa's connection to Canada takes us to the roots of our beliefs. In him, we see his values of respect, acceptance, and diversity that Canadians cherish and celebrate. A little bit about our sound. Uh, Amy Shore. I've just dragged the slide this down a little bit. And now, are you interested to know what's behind the uh, yeah. cover? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And then we're going to have something to eat. So. 
So while you're thinking about who you might like to write a love note or a thank you letter to, or perhaps a confession or an apology, um, Chelsea will make her way to the stage and, and close up our program for us. All right. Barbara Trinos has done a fantastic program this year at the Vancouver International Film Center for Black History Month. Uh, the Oscar-nominated I Am Not Your Negro will be screening, as well as the classic Daughters of the Dust, and a free screening of Soul on Ice, which has got to be the cutest, most hilarious name for a black hockey movie. <laughs> I thought that was a great one. And um, so that movie is free, but for $27, you can also get a pass to three other movies. And I think there's maybe eight in the series. It's a superb series that Barbara has done. I also wanted to acknowledge that Canada Post has really been ahead of the curve in acknowledging some of our fantastic African-Canadian folks, including Viola Desmond, who was uh, featured on the 2012 stamp. Who will be on our $10 bill. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Jackie and her team. Thank you for acknowledging Viola's entrepreneurial spirit and her fight for social justice. She's, a, she's our kind of gal. I would also like to thank the mayor and council. I uh, thank you so much for taking your time to be here and acknowledge this proceedings. I appreciate the work that you're doing in the world for Hogan's Alley and for our city. And I would like to thank you for coming along, giving us the precious moments of your life. I hope that you'll find them well spent and that you'll enjoy the food from Calabash. I'd like to thank the beautiful community advisory team that's been working for some time. you publicly and wholeheartedly for your great smarts and heart. And in closing, I guess there's nothing more to say than a big old, hell yeah, let's do this. Black History Month, all year round. We've got to stay as strong as all of our forebearers. We've got to stay as strong as we know ourselves to be. We've got a good fight ahead of us, and we are going to be well nourished, well fed. We're going to protect our waters and go to the water when we need to be each other. And when Chelsea has that song, Comfort Me, we have to comfort each other. Yeah. There's no joking about that. When you need it, ask for it. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel cold. Oh, one more time, say. Water, heal my body. Water, heal my soul. When I go down, down to the water, by the water,